Hello, this is Big Los, and welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights 2 Original Campaign. Can we go now? Alright, Bishop, if you want. Let's go. Alright, so we're going to make it all the way back to the sunken flagon, and we're going to have a whole bunch of cutscenes this episode. Hey, welcome back. Glad to see you've all returned, and in one piece, no less. Hey, how are you doing? Huh? What do you mean? Well, I got a shard in my chest. Inside the wound on your chest? That means you've been carrying around the shard almost your entire life. I, we had no idea. Ah, notice the stumble in his words. Your uncle has been keeping secrets, I think. Silence, Bishop. I don't know if I'm the best one to be telling you this. But if you've got one of those shards in you... I think you've earned the right to hear everything. You should have told me before. Dagon probably already told you, but when you were an infant, West Harbor was the site of a battle, a terrible battle. The King of Shadows himself led an army of demons against the Neverwinter Army, which had gathered at the village. West Harbor was struck suddenly without warning. There was panic, confusion, villagers fleeing every which way to escape the battle. But Dagon's wife Shayla and your mother Esmeril did not. They stayed behind to save you. As demons and magefire rained upon the village, they fought to reach your crib. By the time Dagon even realized they were missing, it was too late. He could only watch from a distance as the village was consumed in the battle. Okay. It wasn't my decision to keep what happened to your mother from you. And my brother would be furious, I told you. I guess he... he thought it would be too much for you. In any case, when the few that remained returned to the village, no one was alive. Except you. Your mother was there. So much blood and you were clutched in her bosom. A deep wound in your chest. She tried to shield you, but the shard must have cut through her and into you. No one knew how you survived, but you did. And your wound sealed itself within days, leaving the scar that you still bear. But if that wound was due to the shard that pierced you, then that raises many questions. And I'm afraid I'm just all out of answers. So the shard that is in me killed my mom. Look, I wanted to tell you, but... Why the long faces, you two? Somebody die? If so, sounds like a cause for celebration to me. Grobnar, you worthless half-man. Strike up a tune before I strike you. Of course, Sir Bishop. It so happens I have just the tune. By the way, I've decided it would be in both our interests if I stay on with you. Eh, no thanks. I'm heard you would value our friendship so lightly. I don't need more money. Traveling with you is the most fun I've had in years. We don't need any more of your help. No, no, there's no need, Bishop. I'm sorry for before, but you've done more than... Oh, come now, Duncan, I still owe you. And what better way to make it up to you than watching your kin here? After all, a debt is a debt all the way until the end. Isn't that right? I hate to ask, but what happens now? I can't go back to my farm, ashes and all. Well, sorry about that. Travel with us? Her? I'd have to agree with Nishka. She's been through enough. Do you think that's wise? Holy crap! Reptar's head was going through your body! Fine, but she's not getting my share of the treasure. If that is your decision, so be it. But it is her decision as well, since it endangers her. I really appreciate the sudden interest from the both of you. But I can take care of myself. Besides, whenever I'm alone, that's when the problems seem to crop up. If she's going to be with us, she'll need to do some catching up. We can't just keep on rescuing her all the time. Rescuing me? I can rescue myself. Sometimes, when there's not too many lizard men or Githyanki. As long as you get to be a playable character, sure. Well, I know enough to use a sword, and I can handle myself in a fight. I mean, I'm no spellcaster, but if you need an extra blade... I admit, you've rescued me twice now. And if you're going to help teach me to survive these attacks, I accept. But there's some things you're going to have to accept, too. I don't like being left behind, because whenever you're out of my sight, suddenly all this trouble starts happening, and I'm really tired of it. So, look... I won't try to get in your way or anything, but I don't want us to part ways again. I've... I've, well, lost too much already. 
You're not leaving me behind. All right? Well, if that's the way you want it. Then that's all I ask. Okay, so we got an extra party member. So the farm girl's going to join our band. Good. We need someone to make up for the paladin. Or at least to catch arrows if Grobnar's already dead. For now, I say we crack some of those kegs and drown the flagon in wine. Do they really store wine in kegs? I thought they were just in barrels, not kegs. Well, I guess a keg is a barrel. It's a barrel that gets tapped, isn't it? I don't know, I'm confused. I guess you could have wine in a keg. I mean, there's no law against it, right? Oh well. Looks like we're gonna have another cutscene coming up here. Ooh, Act 2. Alright. Lord Nasher. And Torio. Lord Nasher, forgive us. She said it could not wait. It is a matter of some urgency, and there is little time. My lord, I come to you with... You will bow to Lord Nasher. Of course. I meant no disrespect, my lord. Lord Vader. What brings you here, Torio? If there is some new dispute with Luskan, speak with the Trade Guild first, then... Oh no, my lord. This matter concerns Neverwinter. There is a murderer loose in your city. Murderer? And whom has this murderer killed? An entire village lies dead, my lord. Naval, have our scouts reported anything about... The village was slaughtered, and now the murderer hides here within your walls. You must initiate a search at once. I wonder who it is. Only one of us wears a crown. Yet you dare to give me orders within my halls? I will do nothing until I confirm this village's destruction. Then, if I see fit, I will act. Do not test me on this. Whatever pleases you, my lord. But I would act quickly, lest the murderer slip through your fingers. If that were to happen, I have no doubt there would be serious repercussions. I do not need to remind you of the extradition treaty. By every god and his mother, what a fool I was to ever sign anything bearing Luskan seal. I can have Torio detained, Lord Nasher. <sighs> no. She would not be so bold if there were not something to her claims. Dispatch scouts, Naval, and order the watch to search the city. I think it would be in our interest to find the killer before Luskan does. If I may, my lord, I have someone well suited to aid in our search. An agent of ours, Sand. I think that he can help us find our true murderer. No matter how deep Luskan tries to hide him. Sand? I recall that one. I thought he was our eyes, but not by choice. In this matter, my lord, we may trust him implicitly. He takes a certain... pleasure in bringing Luskin truths to light. Very well. See to it, Naval, and make haste. So Sand is an agent, huh? Like Agent Smith? Well, gee, there's a dangerous murderer about. I wonder who it is. Let's see if we can find him. Make him pay for his crimes. What are you doing here? There you are. May I help you? I am here because Luskin has accused you of murder. An entire village, no less. Have you heard of Ember? Wait a minute, me? I'm the murderer? No, you gotta be mistaken. I've scraped things from my boot that I respect more than Luskin. But unless we find some means of clearing you of these charges, we will have to surrender you to them. We've signed a treaty with Luskin. They have the right to dispense low justice for any crimes committed on their soil. And despite my feelings in the matter, I'm not turning you over to a Luskin court for justice. Justice or revenge? Since you have chosen the outlaw's path here in Neverwinter, there is little I can do to help you. Being a knight, even a squire would be enough to keep you from Luskin hands. I do not believe you are guilty of this crime. 
And while nothing would please me more than to bring you to trial, I won't have it done in a Luskin court. I'm surprised you care. There is more I can try to do on your behalf, but not much. You and your men have placed yourself outside Neverwinter's law, and here is the price. I may send a friend of mine to assist you. He has proven invaluable in such cases in the past. Know this. If you cannot prove your innocence in this matter, our only choice will be to deliver you to Luskin. Or Neverwinter herself may pay the price. Do not attempt to leave the city. The gates will be barred to you until Nasher says otherwise. So can I get a lawyer? There you are. Axel sent me to tell you he has someone who wants to meet you. Oh, great. Some more? He will be pleased to see you. Okay, so we gotta go see Axel. No way in the hells will I let those Luskins get their hands on you. But there's still something we can do, right? Even Naval said as much. All you have to do is pledge yourself to one of the knights and Luskin can't touch you. And we're innocent, besides. I mean, the slaughter of an entire village? That's going too far, even by Luskin standards. Is it? If you have something Luskin wants, they'd kill an entire city for it. They don't care. They attacked Neverwinter once, and even now they're sending fleets to attack Ruithim. Give them an excuse and you'll soon find Luskin blades at your gate. Uh, Duncan, looks like we have a guest. Oh, as if the day couldn't get any worse. What do you want, Sand? I am here to help you. And your kin, actually. Oh, really? And what's the price? If it's more than a half copper, you can see yourself out. No, I seem to have been given an ultimatum, in fact. I have heard of your troubles with Luskin. Word travels fast. Know that if you are sent to Luskin, you will be killed. Yeah, tell me something I don't know. I realize you may find my sincerity difficult to believe, but allow me to act on your behalf. There are laws, and there is right and wrong. While I believe you are quick to take liberties with the law, I do not believe you are guilty of this. And if they should get a hold of you, you will be killed. I believe people should answer for their crimes, but it must be just. So you're going to be my lawyer? Well, at best, they will put you on trial, or what seems to be one, then execute you. At worst... They will dispense with the courtroom mockery and execute you as soon as you step within the gate. And when I say execute, do not think it will be one clean chop of a headman's axe. Luskins have all sorts of inventive ways for executing prisoners that is best not to describe on a full stomach. Images of William Wallace come to mind. I think we should give him the chance. This is not a battle that can be won by swords. And I, for one, am ill-equipped for such a fight. Sure. After all, a hedge wizard can't make things any worse. Maybe all that digging through books might prove useful. If we need to burn down Luskin, then perhaps we shall seek you, Quara, but your ignorance will cause more damage here than you know. Luskin is not ruled by men. It is ruled by magic, by the masters of the towers. And if they have decided that you are to be delivered to them, then... So, let them try. Whatever spark of magic you think you have, you idiot girl, they will bleed from you by demon, spell, and curse until even your father won't be able to save you. And I suspect that what they seek may have consequence beyond you, beyond me, for much of the realms. Zing, Sand! If you have connections, as I suspect you now do, I suggest you use them now. Even the honor of becoming a squire of the least respected of Nash's knights would keep you from Luskin's hands. Perhaps your new friend, Axel de Vry, can act where Naval's hands are tied. Let me join with you. I have considerable experience with these matters, and foiling Luskin plots is something I relish. And hot dog and mustard. All right, so he leveled up. So who are we gonna bring with this? Well, gotta bring Quora, regardless. Yeah, I guess we'll bring Eleni. That counts as two. And we get Chandra as a free party member. I concur. 
Wait a minute, I thought it said level up. Well, I guess it auto leveled him well, when he got put from my party. What do you want? Alright, so before I. Yeah, we're gonna accept the same party. Before I. do anything else, we're gonna go pay a visit to Axel. And what I mean by anything else, I mean leveling up the rest of my characters who weren't in my party when I gained a level. What do we got here? Tasha? You're the one who travels with Nishka. It's more like she travels with me. Whatever you say. Oh yeah, okay. You happen to run into her and tell her Tasha wants to talk to her. Well, well, she's inside. Why don't you go talk to her yourself? Jeez. Yeah, you know this has got to have something to do with Leldon. Always. Alright, so that's one more thing we're going to take care of later. We're going to put her in the party and we'll, we'll take care of Leldon. Hopefully permanently this time. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was... Perhaps create a signature weapon for the captain. Like, maybe a... I don't know, a plus three rapier. And notice that you can't go anywhere else in, this, in the world map. You can only go within the city. But you can go to Black Lake now, so that's good. Now, a signature weapon for the captain would be like a plus three rapier. Maybe that's flaming. Even though Eleni does cast flame weapon a lot, maybe we don't need to put flame on it. Maybe we could put like ice on it or something. So it'll have fire and ice damage. Then it should do like double damage, shouldn't it? No, it won't. It, it just does... It'll be 1d6 for both. Alright, so let's make our way over to Axel's place. Oh yeah, we gotta equip Chandra too, because... She doesn't have any good equipment right now. Probably doesn't have any weapons either. Although, if I do recall, she is very proficient with short swords. So, I might give her a couple of the short swords that the captain has right now. And the captain will get a signature weapon. We'll do that off camera, but for now we'll talk to Axel. Right here. Yes, here I am, Axel, and... No, they didn't have the voice actor do this part, so it's all text. So, this is a so-called knight that we have to talk to. We got nine gold. All right. So, this is the great murderer. Knighthood has fallen on lean days. But then, they made me a knight. So, if I was made a knight, with my list of crimes, why not the same for a slaughterer of helpless villagers? You know, I don't really find that funny. I brought you here to make you a squire. So, actually, yes. And what squire could ask for a better knight than me? Most will fill you with pretty words and solemn vows. I tell you the truth, and the truth is that words are no armor, and vows are no sword. In battle, the man who cleaves your head from your shoulders won't care about your honor. So leave your pretty stories of chivalry and goodness behind. Fight and live. Survivors make their own honor, tell their own tales. Yeah, that's how I've been doing it. Alas, the law requires me to teach you the Knight's Code. Luckily, it has nothing to say about remembering the Code. <clears throat> to be brave and valorous in battle against your enemies, to show no fear in their presence. <laughs> Show me a man who knows no fear, and I will show you a fool whose days in this world are numbered. To be just and righteous, to embody and uphold the laws of your lord and land. That's nonsense, too. The only justice you'll find is at the point of a sword. Your noble lord wants only to know that you've followed his commands, and could care less about your methods. Should you obey the lord who asks you to put a village of innocence to the torch? Is that chivalrous? Is it noble? No, screw that guy. Wisely spoken, no code or law can tell you what is right. 
Those answers must come from within. Anyway, we're not quite done with the code yet. To be respectful to your enemies and kind to your fellows. You may safely ignore that vow as well. Show respect to your enemies when they are dead. And never forget that your brothers can easily turn against you. To protect the weak and those who cannot defend themselves. We are all weak, and everything can defend itself. Remember that and you might live to receive your spurs from Lord Nasher. You sound like a hypocrite. You should remember that no code should be followed too closely, lest you betray the very thing your code sought to protect. Now there are still some... proprieties we must observe. You must undertake a night-long vigil in the Solace Glade, alone. Perhaps you can use the time to let what I've told you sink in. Or perhaps you'd like to speak with your god. No doubt you'll be granted an audience for such an auspicious occasion. Tell me when you're ready to undertake your vigil. I will take you there. Alright, but not right now. I'm in no hurry. Return whenever you wish. Alright, this is Big Los signing off. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.